Hello. So, this is a Selenium new and improved video, and I decided not only to do new and improved videos for the transition metals, but also for some other elements that I felt that I could uh, do a better job of um, doing, doing more experiments or something than I did in my previous video. So for selenium, I'm actually going to do a cool experiment with selenium, not just show you a little ample of it and say here is selenium. Um, but first, of course, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about selenium. So uh, selenium is in the same column on the periodic table as oxygen and sulfur and tellurium below it. And oxygen obviously is extremely important in life. Um, sulfur is also very important and is found in many places in living organisms. And selenium is as well, although much less so. Uh, selenium is found in a couple amino acids, kind of serving the place of sulfur because it's, it's in the same column. Um, however, if you eat too much selenium, apparently you will begin to smell badly. So don't eat too much selenium, and it's, it's actually toxic in its pure form in any kind of uh, tangible amount, um, because, because the, even though it's necessary, because the upper intake level is, is so low, you don't actually need very much of it. Um, a, a pretty famous place, uh, or food that has a lot of selenium, is a Brazil nut. Um, now, a Brazil, Brazil nuts actually have so much selenium that if you eat one average Brazil nut, that already is th the entire daily recommended value of selenium. So here is a single Brazil nut. Um, you see, it's not even that big. And I'm going to now eat it. Ah, doesn't taste that good. Mmm. I'm not eating the entire, my entire daily recommended value of selenium. So here is something else that I think is very cool about selenium. Selenium is just in the right place on the periodic table where it has some metallic properties and some non-metallic properties. It is a metalloid. Now, what this means is that it can have certain forms of the pure element that kind of appear metallic and certain forms that appear non-metallic. Now, this is true for several elements, but I think it is, at least in my experience, the most pronounced for selenium. And I'm about to go down to the lab and do an experiment where I uh, demonstrate this, these two di different, or I show these two different forms of selenium and demonstrate how selenium can look both metallic and non-metallic. So let's head down to the lab. In this video, I'm going to convert black selenium, a lustrous metallic form of selenium, or metallic looking form of selenium, into red selenium, an amorphous, non-metallic form of selenium that looks a little bit like sulfur, except for the color. So the first step in this process is to add some nitric acid. Um, you want it to be eh, 40 to 60 percent, so mine's 75, I'm diluting it a small amount. Um, and then just get in, like an alcohol lamp or something and gently warm up the acid to make, to make the selenium react more. Now you might think that you're, now what will happen as you can see from the reaction below is that the selenium is reacting through two reactions and forming um, selenium dioxide. Now the, the color you're seeing is actually not the selenium dioxide. That is nitrogen dioxide. Now dilute the acid so that it's no longer oxidizing, but simply acidic. So now I'm adding some sodium metabisulfate, which will react with the acid to give sulfur dioxide gas a reducer, because it's a reducer because sulfur is only in the 4 plus oxidation state. The sulfur dioxide will bubble through the solution and react with the selenium dioxide, reducing the selenium from the 4 plus oxidation state down to elemental selenium. The elemental selenium will actually precipitate out, not in its black metallic form, but in its amorphous red form. So over the next few minutes, I start to see the solution turn redder and redder, and eventually see a precipitate of selenium. I'm going to speed up the following footage so that the reaction doesn't seem to take as long.
Here is a selenium the next day, and it has mostly settled down to the bottom. Here I'm converting the red allotrope back to the uh, black allotrope simply by heating it with a torch.